Hello, hello, how are you? It is Dr. Emily, functional podiatrist, human movement specialist, founder of EBFA Global, and inventor of Nervosa Technology. So I wanna take a few minutes to speak to you about shoes. And the specific feature around shoes I wanna talk about is the toe spring or the four foot rocker. Now, oftentimes, Many people who are very pro barefoot, pro minimal, will focus on the toe spring being a bad thing, a negative thing, that it is preloading the plantar fascia and preloading the first MPJ in a way that is uh, potentially leading to dysfunction or could lead it to some tightness within the plantar fascia, which obviously extends into the posterior group. Well, I am here to have a little chat with you about when you actually would want to have a toe spring, when it is advantageous to your clients, to your athletes and to patients, and really functionally why you would want them and why they're put into shoes. So I'm going to pull out the first shoe, which is a Vivo Barefoot that does not have a toe spring. Now, if you're not familiar with a toe spring, the toe spring would be the curvature that's at the end of the shoe. So a really good comparison to the Vivo Barefoot or a contrast to the Vivo Barefoot would be the Nike Free, which I have here. And you can see, just moving that out of the way, you can see that there is a toe spring. So when we compare these two shoes, put them this way, you can see that if we mimic the grounds, I'm trying to near here, you can see that there's a curvature on the front of the Nike Free that is giving it kind of a favoring towards this forward direction. Now, the original reason of why toe springs were added, if you think of the evolution of athletic footwear and dress footwear is functionally around running is the toe spring means you want to go forward. So it's helping you go forward. It's helping you to preload into that first MPJ. Now there is some research showing that if you do sit with your first MP MPJ in this extended position, it can start to lead to tightness within the plantar fascia, the posture group, some of the intrinsic muscles. And that's why a lot of minimal shoe companies, you can see here again, Vivo Barefoot, has no toe spring. This is totally flat. So it's mimicking really a true barefoot position. Totally advantageous when you're looking for natural foot function. Now, let's say maybe we need a toe spring or even a four foot rocker what are some of the conditions that you might actually need this some of the big ones that i see in my office is a helix limitus helix rigidus so if your client or your patient has arthritis in the first mpj has limited range of motion in the first mpj maybe they had a turf toe which is a jamming of the first mpj that is leading to an accelerated rate of arthritis maybe they have Pain when they have range of motion of the first MPJ. Maybe they have had surgery, and because of the surgery, they have a limitation in that range of motion. These are some big ones that you want to limit the number of flexions that they're going through. So depending on the severity of the arthritis and the limitation in that first MPJ, I just want you to understand that helix limitus rigidus traumatic arthritis, DJD, is progressive, which means every step that that client or patient is taking is technically advancing the arthritis. It's starting to continuously stress the cartilage. So you might want to ask them, okay, do you want to limit the number of flexions or assist in the flexion by having a rocker or a toe spring in your shoe so that when you go over that first MPJ, it's not going to be painful? That would be one application that I use it. Another one would be if the patient or client is recovering from sesamoiditis or a sesamoid fracture. Now, most sesamoid fractures don't heal. So you are typically offloading them maybe with a dancer's pad or some other padding, strapping, et cetera. And then you get them into a position that you want to really reduce the stress to the sesamoid. So sesamoid issues, I actually do look at a lot of four foot rockers and toe springs for those patients. Some other big ones that I look at is a plantar plate tear. So a plantar plate tear is on the second MPJ, not the first. So if we're mimicking this as my foot, the first 
MPJ, or sorry, the second MPJ, you can get a little tear or a partial tear or thinning in the ligament, which is called the plantar plate, which stabilizes the second MPJ. When I'm treating those in my office, maybe I'm transitioning them out of some immobilization because we did some stem cells, I always take them into a rigid shoe that has a four foot rocker or a toe spring, same thing. We'll use that as a synonymous term here, okay? So that would be another pathology. And then neuromas as well. So a neuroma, you're getting the neuroma pain every time you push forward into that flexed position. Now this again does not mean be in the four foot rocker the entire time that you have a neuroma for the rest of your life. But if I'm trying to get your neuroma into a quiescent state, I may pull you out of your minimal shoes and say, for this period, two weeks, maybe four weeks, we'll put you into a rocker, a toe spring to help take some of that stress off of your neuroma. Yes. So that shifting forward into a propulsive phase of gait or a step off position can increase the stress to the first MPJ, the sesamoids, the plantar plate, second MPJ, or into a neuroma. So there is a mechanical or a functional advantage to a toe spring four foot rocker in certain pathology. Now, some of the best shoes that I wanna go over when you're looking at a four foot rocker or a toe spring, if you are in the direction of a minimal shoe. So again, Vivo barefoot, no toe spring, no four foot rocker. Nike Free has a toe spring, but if you have a toe spring and then your shoe is very, flexible otherwise for the most part when we're looking at this shoe. So it's really flexing over that toe spring. I would actually not recommend this toe spring or this shoe for someone who has one of the conditions that I just mentioned, namely into that first MPJ. Yes. If you are trying to take advantage of a true toe spring for the reasons that I recommended, you want to have toe spring plus rigidity under that sole. So the fact that this is very flexible, I would actually not recommend this for one of my patients. Now a shoe that I actually really love, one of my good friends in, uh, in Oregon developed it. She is a speed walker. This is a shoe that's called Reshod. Reshod is developed for speed walking, which means they're clearly going in a forward direction in a very fast way, stressing the feet and really stressing that propulsive phase of gait. You can see that there is a spring that is built into this, but this spring is built into a rigid, yes, so this is a rigid shoe. You are essentially going over like a rocking chair in the front of this shoe. Perfect. I love this shoe for my patients that have any of those conditions that I just suggested. Reshod, I'm going to link it into the, the description of this video. Please check them out if you truly do have a patient or a client that has halicylimidus, rigidus, sesamoid issues, anything with the second MPJ or that neuroma. This is going to take stress off of those structures. It might get those structures into a quiescent state. And then you can further look at foot function once they're in that quiescent state. Reshod, again, I'm going to link it. Rigid, rigid with that toe spring, amazing. Now some other shoes, I just want you to understand where we see toe springs, not just in athletic footwear. Um, Dance Goes is another really good brand that I do recommend. They are a rigid shoe and they have the four foot rocker or the toe spring. Now, dress shoes, you will see a lot of the four foot rocker because when it comes to footwear, you don't want to just be recommending all of these athletic shoes that I just suggested because your clients or your patients have to get to work somehow. They need to be thinking of what are some dress shoe options that are available. So this one has the toe spring, but again, it's very, very flexible. Yes. So this would not be a toe spring that I would recommend you would want to look at some of the more uh, stiffer soled dress shoes that still have the toe spring. Now, if you're curious of why a dress shoe has a toe spring, it's because it narrows it. So aesthetically, toe springs make the shoe look a little bit more appealing to the eye. It's kind of like sexy, like the curvatures on car. This will narrow the front of the shoe, which again, I know we don't want to think narrow, but the toe spring from a dress perspective, the aesthetics, what it does to the eye is really why they add toe springs to dress shoes. 
The last example of where you would actually want to have a toe spring, this is a total extreme example, is in the stiletto. So when you have a stiletto that has a certain height, so this is probably a five inch heel here in a platform as well, mechanically it is very difficult to get over these shoes. You would need probably 100 degrees of first MPJ dorsiflexion, which many people don't have, to get over a five inch heel plus a platform, almost every single platform heel I would actually have a rocker built into it. So you can see the rocker that's in the front of the shoe. That rocker is what you're going over because again, most people don't have 100 degrees of dorsiflexion in the first MPJ. So every single platform or five inch heel is gonna have a rocker built into it. It just mechanically makes it easier. So those are a few examples of where you would see four foot rocker or a toe spring, why they're added to shoes, whether it's aesthetics or it's from a functional perspective, meaning helping the, the individual to move forward, or if you're thinking of like reshod and the stiffer shoe for speed walking, functionally that makes sense. You would actually want that to be built into the shoe. Remember the different pathologies that I suggested of where you want to go to when it comes to suggesting or recommending toe spring four foot rocker. And then really for any of the other foot types, clients, baseline function, you do really want to have the wider shoe, the lack of the toe spring, think of how I showed you the Vigo barefoot, that would be your go-to. But again, there's exceptions to every single type of footwear that we recommend. And when are those outside recommend recommendations of a toe spring four foot rocker really necessary or appropriate? I hope that you guys benefited. If you want to learn more about EBFA Global or how I treat patients, please either go to ebfaglobal.com or head to my practice page, which is dremlystoffel.com. Take care and stay barefoot strong.